back working on the 1982 today and uh, we're going to talk about some car audio so uh i made a joke in the beginning that we had this uh, beautiful cassette player with the uh, the awesome label maker job right there like that freaking sweet so anyways that's going to come out and uh, i ordered one of these custom auto sound uh, kind of old school radios. I just went with the auxiliary input instead of Bluetooth just to save a few bucks, especially since we don't drive it that much. And uh, just bought four um, new speakers. I've already taken one out here. I'll show you what that looks like. And uh, just so you know, those are four by sixes in this car. And then I had the dual rear speaker, uh, which are six by nines. Uh, so we got the radio, uh, we got the quick connect harnesses. So we're not cutting factory harnesses. And I'll show you what uh, this looks like over here. Top of my workbench, also known as the tannin bed. But uh, once you get this out, these are 10 millimeter bolts um, or nuts, and they come off pretty easily. And this will slide out, but man, look at all this. This speaker was shot. There's no foam in there or any surround left. So I just bought some generic, uh, just parts house speakers. Didn't want anything crazy, especially since there's not a lot of depth in there and I didn't want to use um, a different style speaker box. I wanted to keep it as an original one as possible, but I'm gonna go ahead and put the new one in and reinstall this and we'll be good to go. The new stuff. Um, so you can see that they are almost identical in height and size, which is exactly what I wanted. I didn't want anything uh, super big or anything that was gonna rock the house just because I didn't want to uh, put a new speaker box or change any of that up. But uh, these came off Amazon. I'll put a link down in the description, but they were Boss Audio Systems. So once again, nothing crazy, but uh, definitely gonna be better than what was in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this back on to the, uh, to the little mounting plate that it has and the trim cover, and then we'll go ahead and get this one reinstalled. All right, so we've got the speaker uh, installed on this trim plate, as well as I've put down uh, the 10 millimeter nuts. They're back installed. Just remember, these are on some old fragile plastics. You don't have to go super tight. You'll rip that out of there. And uh, these are my quick connection harnesses that I have. Um, I'm a huge fan of not cutting into factory stereo wire or anything crazy like that. And I mean, these are as easy as it gets. You got a positive and negative that'll connect to the new aftermarket speaker and then a direct plug-in right into your uh, factory uh, speaker harness, which is pretty awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and get those snapped on and get this put back in and we'll be ready to roll to the next side and I'll show you how you actually take this whole section out. All right, so I've got it snapped in and just a, a good rule of thumb before you go and button everything back up, it's always good just to test to make sure that everything's working and... That's their here. words. If you want to hunt it down and listen to it and determine your own... But we definitely have sound coming out of the speaker and it sounds a lot better than what it did before. So I'm gonna go ahead and reattach the three screws that hold this in. By the way, you gotta be super limber to work back here. This is crazy. But you've got a mounting uh, screw hole here, one here and one down here. You just gotta kind of find them in the carpet and you can actually see them up in there. So, and they're just nice. Well, the good thing is my magnet right here caught them all for us. But that's what you're looking for, those three little guys right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this reinstalled. We'll move over and take this one out and do the same thing. I will, I wanna give you a quick tip. Uh, so those were pretty easy to see, those three mounting screws. These were actually tucked in the carpet a little further. So I was having to use the other side as a reference, but I can tell you just a, a tool that I use that helped me kind of narrow these things down faster. It's just an old magnetic tool. I sit around the carpet till I felt it catch and I was able to kind of hone in on that. So if you're having difficulty, especially in this tight spot, trying to figure out how to get those screws out or where to find them, uh, I would definitely recommend using one of those metal grab tools. And I slid the seat up to get a little bit of traction. And first off, we found some goodies in here. Let me get this to zoom in. So we have a petrified wasp and a dime. I was kind of excited to see what year it was. I haven't looked yet. Let's see what we've got. Definitely old. Uh, let's see if this will zoom in for us or focus in. Looks like 1966. Wow, that's pretty crazy. I wonder exactly how long that dime has been sitting down there on that seat track. And we definitely have to get a, a, a vacuum back here. That's kind of gross. Back speakers are in, so I'm going to go ahead and move to the front. You pop this little grill off. There should be a 4x6 speaker sitting right here, just like ours. And you have four self-tapping screws that are 
uh, on each corner. Looks like I think they're seven millimeter. I'll double check that, but these two up front are gonna be pretty easy to get to. And these in the back, they're gonna be a little bit of a bear. So let me see what we can do to figure this one out. All right, so I've got one out. Gonna go ahead and work on the other two. Well, hi there, bud. I know this guy doesn't make their channel very much, but this is Aiden. They're a little toy poodle. Sometimes we refer to him as bear. You get to see him a lot. That's an old man. Just had a birthday a couple days ago. So here was my ingenious idea. I just took the socket with a pair of lock and gel pliers and I was able to get this up in there, break these screws loose and uh, get them to a point where I'm just gonna use a wrench just like this, a little seven millimeter get back up in there. I figured if you had a ratcheting set, probably make this a little bit quicker, but uh, it's working for me since I don't have a set, but I'm gonna go ahead and get these last two uh, screws out of here and we'll go ahead and put the new uh, speaker in. All right, got the old speaker out. It's pretty worn out. The surround's blown out just like the other ones. And um, use the same harness that we've seen on the back speakers will be used up on the front speakers. This probably took two or three minutes to get the, the speaker out. Just know you're going to spend some time up on those two at the front. So just take your time and get creative on how to get that out. If you have a windshield out of the car, I would recommend going ahead and replace them now because that would be a lot easier. But um, I'm going to go ahead and put the new one in. We'll test it and make sure everything's good. Then we'll go ahead and screw it down and finish up this. I'll replace the passenger side. Same exact steps as the driver side. So pretty easy. And then uh, I'll tell you about what we're working on, uh, working with on this gauge cluster, uh, as well as I'll show off the new radio that we got from Auto Sound or Retro Sound. And um, we'll go ahead and wrap this one up. So here are the Boss uh, speakers again. Once again, just cheap generic house brand, but you can see same height, same size. So you're not worrying about any type of fitment issue when you go to put these in a factory location. There we go. Fits like a glove. Let's see if it works. Alright, we're in business. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten these down and we'll put the grill on. Move over to the passenger side and call this project done. And here's our radio. I like the look. It kind of has that retro look when it's off. Um, the Corvette is actually a uh, kind of like a raised decal instead of the label maker, but really solid radio. Look at that, baby. Made in the U.S. of A. Oh, no, I read that wrong. Modified and engineered in the USA. Made in China. Well, either way, looks good. I think it's going to be uh, a huge improvement to what we have going on uh, in the cur currently in the car. But... Uh, we're gonna hold off on putting this in today uh, based on the fact that I'm still waiting on a couple parts. So uh, let me slide over here. I'm gonna go over here to the car and kind of tell you what we're working with. But uh, the temperature gauge, I just put in a new sending unit, but you can see the car has not been started today and the gauge is off. So I've got a resistor coming in for that to adjust. Uh, the fuel gauge likes to bounce around uh, when you're driving around the car, so it's just worn out. So I have a new fuel gauge coming in. Old pressure gauge does the same thing, and then our oil temp gauge does absolutely nothing. So a new gauge with a sender. I've ordered all this from Wilcox, so I'm just waiting for it to come in. And uh, surprisingly enough, the only gauge that actually works in this car is the bolt gauge. So, uh, but that is what we're waiting on, and that is all one piece with that radio in it. So I am not gonna take the radio out to put the radio in uh, just to get back in here, and I enjoy driving the car, so. I don't want to just take everything out and have a big old mess waiting for everything to come in and with the holidays it's just the mail is moving a little slower but we'll get that uh and get us a new radio and be ready to roll but car's looking great uh, we had the water pump put in last week i know i thought i was going to do it and I end up paying somebody to do it which i'm not mad about so um that's it y'all we're waiting for a couple of gauges to come in and uh We'll be done with this thing outside of getting the nose painted um, and just a couple little tiddly piddly things. But man, it's just what a beautiful car. Uh, it's been so fun to work on and just kind of uh, get all the little tiny things fixed on it that were just driving me nuts. But 
Uh, I appreciate you you all hanging out with us. Don't forget to uh, subscribe. Check us out. We did a new Facebook page, Donuts with Dad. Uh, so check that out. I usually cross post the videos, so you'll see them on both. But um, I think that is it for today. I appreciate you guys hanging out with us, and thanks for watching. Once again, don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you later.